Okay, we are on the second video now for lesson 5.5, still talking about inequalities in one triangle. You notice everything we do in this lesson, we're only gonna be dealing with one triangle at a time. When we get to lesson 5.6, we're gonna deal with two separate triangles, okay? Now, this is called the exterior angle inequality theorem. Now you'll notice there's no theorem number, and the reason for that is they didn't actually put it in the lesson, they put it in your homework. Okay, but I, I want to actually teach it to you and not just have you look at your homework and try to figure it out on your own. Okay, so it's a pretty easy theorem. Okay, it's not too difficult. Okay, um, so what it goes back to though is this picture. We actually learned about this picture and something called the exterior angle theorem. Didn't have any quality in here. So if we cover up that word, I don't know if I can cover it up here. Okay, there you go. All right, the exterior angle theorem talked about this, and then we're gonna think about, well, if that's true, what else can I tell? So, see if you guys remember what the exterior angle theorem said about these angles. Remember, it's talked about an exterior angle, this one out here, was equal to the far away, the remote, or the book used the word non-adjacent interior angles. So what we could say with the exterior angle theorem was that the measure of angle one equaled the measure of angle two plus the measure of angle three. And that's what the exterior angle theorem said. Well, it's very simple then to go to the exterior angle inequality theorem. All it does is say, well, what about the measure of angle one versus the measure of angle two? And what about the measure of angle one versus the measure of angle three? Okay, so. If I add these two together to get them to equal this, but now I only have angle two, well, they're not gonna be equal anymore, right? Because angle three is not here anymore. So the question is, which one's bigger? Is it angle one or is it angle two? Well, if you think about it, two things added together to equal one thing, and now I only have one of them? Well, this side's definitely a lot smaller now when it only has one angle. So this side's gotta be bigger now than this. So we can say the measure of angle one is greater than the measure of angle two. And then we, same idea here. If I don't use angle two at all and I only have angle three, angle one is going to be bigger. That's it. That's all the exterior angle inequality theorem says is these two things right here. Okay. The way you would word it is you'd say something like this. The measure of an exterior angle of a triangle is greater than one remote or non-adjacent, I usually use the word remote meaning far away, one remote interior angle by itself. Okay, no. Remember, if I add the two remote interior angles together like this, then it equals the exterior angle. But if I'm only using one of them at a time, the exterior angle is going to be bigger. It's going to be greater than one of them. Okay? That's all the theorem says. So let's look at a couple quick examples of it. So in this picture, I have four angles marked. Now, there's a lot of information you should know in this picture. So let's talk about a few things. Okay? First, if we ignore angle one. What do you know about these three angles in any triangle? Well, you should know that all three angles add together to equal 180 degrees. So the measure of angle two plus the measure of angle three plus the measure of angle four equals 180 degrees. Now that's a review, all right? Does anyone remember the name of that theorem? Okay, some of you probably remember that. It's called the triangle sum theorem, okay? Now, what do we know about angle one and angle three and angle four. Well, this is what we just talked about. First off, we can go to the old review thing, the exterior angle theorem, and it says the measure of angle one equals the measure of angle three plus the measure of angle four. Okay, and that's the exterior angle theorem. And then we have the thing we just learned where we say, okay, if I take angle one and I only compare it to angle three, then the exterior angle has to be greater than one interior angle by itself, one remote interior angle, far away. And then the same thing works with one and four. Measure of angle one is greater than the measure of angle four. Now, I have some people who wanna talk about angle one and angle two and say that angle one has to be bigger than angle two. 
Well, it sure looks that way. It looks like angle one is obtuse, and it looks like angle two is acute, but we don't know anything about angle one and angle two for sure as to which one's bigger, especially if our triangle is drawn more like this. Okay, let's say we have something like this, the exact same things, one, two, three, and four. Now, with one and two, we can't really tell which one's bigger. Now it maybe looks like this is acute and that's obtuse, or maybe they're both 90, but we don't know for sure. So we don't want to compare one and two. However, there is one thing we do know about angle one and angle two, whether it's here or whether it's here. Does anyone remember what we know about angle one and angle two? You guys remember our linear pair postulate. Angle one and angle two are a linear pair. They're still a linear pair over here. So angle one, and angle two have to be supplementary, which means they add to equal 180 degrees. Okay, so this is review, linear pair postulate. This is review, triangle sum theorem. This is review, exterior angle theorem. This and this are the new things. Okay, do not tell me that angle one is greater than angle two or less than angle two or equal, even if that looks like it. We could even have something that looks like this, okay, where let me see if I can draw this pretty good here. All right, so one, two, three, and I'm going to tuck four up there in the top. Okay, any of these three triangles, let me zoom in a little bit. Okay, I'm finally figuring out how to do this correctly. Okay, so any of these three triangles, okay, where it looks like angle one is obtuse, looks like maybe it's a right angle, and looks more acute, but it doesn't matter. The five things we listed, angle one and angle two equal 180 is true here, it's true here, and it's true here. Angle two, three, and four add to equal 180 is true here, it's true here, and it's true here. Angle one equals angle three plus angle four is true here. If I add the remote interior angles together, they equal the exterior angle. Same thing here, they're remote, they're far away. They're remote and they're far away. And then angle one is greater than angle three. Here, 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 it works on every single one of those. And angle one, this one says angle one is greater than angle four. That's true here. Remember, it only works for the remote ones. It doesn't work for the adjacent one, okay? Remember, it said remote interior angles, not any interior angles. So angle one's greater than angle four here, and here, and here. All right, so let's look at an algebra problem with that. Copy this down real quick, and we're, and we're gonna solve it. Okay, so copy it down. Try to solve it on your own real fast if you can, and then we'll take a look at it. Remember, pause the video while you're doing this so that uh, you have enough time to finish it before I start talking about it. All right, here we go. So, exterior angle is greater than an interior angle by itself. So all we know is that 2x plus 12 is greater than 54. Now we solve these just like we solve regular algebra problems. We can subtract and divide can be a little bit careful with division. We're not going to have a problem on this one. We'll, we'll look at that in the next one, in the next video. Okay, but minus 12 and minus 12. So I get 2x. Keep your greater than sign. Don't put a less than sign all of a sudden or a, an equal sign. And we get 42. Now I divide by 2, and I get x is greater than 21. Now that doesn't narrow it down. It could be lots of different numbers. Now we can narrow it down a little bit more. Because what do we know about an angle? This angle cannot be more than how many degrees? Well, it can't be more than 180, right? It's got to be less than 180. So we could also say that. So 2x plus 12 is less than 180. Okay, and then we could solve that the same way. We subtract 12. We get 2x is less than 168. We divide by 2, and we get x is less than 84. Okay, so now we got it narrowed down a little bit more. There's still a lot of possibilities, though. Now, we can write these two things as one answer, though. The way you do this is you write the smallest number first, so 21. You turn it around. So x is greater than 21 means 21 is less than x. And then x is less than 84. I don't need to write x again, so I just write less than 84. And there's my answer. x is somewhere between 21 and 84. I don't know where. All I know is it's somewhere between 21 and 84. Now, if this is the only thing you did on this, that's pretty good. That means you're understanding the theorem. This over here means you're understanding everything really, really well. Um, I'd love to see this answer, but if this is the only answer you write down in your homework, yeah, I'd probably take it. 
Um, honors kids, I really expect you to be able to understand this though where you have to combine the two, okay? All right, so that's it for this second video, all right? We've got one more video dealing with a theorem that takes a little bit longer with some of the algebra, okay? So uh, one theorem left to go in lesson 5.5, our third video.